Here's the steering cylinder completely out. Just so you're aware that if you move it, you can have a lot of fluid come out. Yeah, if you notice uh, how easily this moves, it should not move like that. It's not in good shape. That is why it's being rebuilt. The fluid itself doesn't look bad. I will take a lot of pictures as I take this apart to ensure that I put it back together properly because taken apart in order to rebuild it now if i was uh replacing it wouldn't be anywhere near as bad you want to pay attention to air where everything is the entire time that you're doing this because you put one thing on the wrong way wrong direction or whatever and then you find yourself having to do more work i didn't show it on camera but uh <laughs> i was going through a lot of tools and methods trying to figure out how to get this off and off the cylinder and eventually got it to the point where i've got it in a vise i put this rag on here because definitely don't want to ding this up because you ding it up you could lose your seal and then you got to replace the whole thing anyway get this wood block here and a clamp holding it in place and then i held this down while my son used the pipe wrench with a fence post for leverage and i'm telling you when you go to take these off, you may have to try a bunch of different methods and it's all dependent on the tools you may have, but the big thing is leverage. And so in this case, so you do have this right here, but you also have another piece in here that's uh, part of the bar here that's uh, got some flat, it's got two flat spots on. So I'm assuming that this means you can take this off and you may have this still left so that you can get this side off because you need something to grab onto. You definitely don't want to put anything <laughs> on your, uh, your bar there because you'll mess it up. So in this case, even though the pipe wrench was here, leverage with the uh, fence post was over here, it actually came off down here. Um, the thought was that it was going to come off down here, but it didn't. So did come off over here and of note they did use some thread lock so be prepared for that depends on the type of thread lock they're using i'm not sure which one this was but it was pretty tough to get off you should only have to take one side off surprisingly it is still very tight the piston is not going to come out going to stop right here and the reason why is because inside the uh, actual uh, cylinder it's going and it's stopping here uh, because there's two split rings on both sides there's a small one to the inside and then a larger one that have to come off and then this will have to be undone in order to open it up Either way, this side and this side are going to have to come off because they have components that need to be replaced. There's one uh, ring. This is what I ended up doing. I was having difficulty trying to figure out how to get this piston out of the cylinder. Uh, if you look at this side, this piece does not come up or anything. It's right there. There's a split ring in there. There's a split ring over here. So, although I did not want to download the service manual, I ended up doing it. It was like $15 for the manual. And print it out. And this is what you get. One page of instructions. Nothing very specific. Although it does tell you that you're supposed to drill a 5.25 millimeter hole right here in order to get this split ring out but what's not clear because there's almost no instructions is the piece that goes right here 
which is the same as this piece right here, that piece can be pushed in, which exposes the split ring that's in here. So then you're supposed to take a small screwdriver, push it through this hole, push the split ring, and then pry it out with a screwdriver. And that's what you end up doing on both sides. This is the guide assembly. You push that inside of the cylinder tube. Then you drill your hole. In case you have the same problem that I had when this snap ring was in there, not realizing that the ring was rusted in place and could not move even though I used penetrating oil. What I had done is I drilled a hole right where the split is on the snap ring. The hole should have been over on the side of the ring somewhere so that you can actually push on it from the outside with a screwdriver. Um, but because I couldn't move the snap ring around, I had to drill another hole and unintentionally what I had done was uh, drilled a hole right on the edge of the, the ring. And what ended up happening is it ended up breaking off. So whatever you do when you drill the hole, because that's not in the instructions, uh, don't put the hole in between the split on the snap ring. So that did come out. It's out finally. Now I'm getting ready to do the other side. Right up here at about one o'clock is where the split is. The idea here is uh, once you move that guide inward, what you're supposed to do is take your drill bit drill you probably want to put it like close to one of the end pieces uh here or here probably safer here but not in the gap you want to put it here and then uh, while you're drilling you don't want to drill through the snap ring you just want to get a hole in there uh, and possibly while you're putting that drill bit in you'll see the snap ring moving inward uh, if you start to cut it, you may have some issues getting it out. And again, the hole is supposed to be 2.5 millimeters or 0 0.098 inch diameter. You'll notice where you put the hole, um, it's right next to the edge. Where? Right here, you got another snap ring that goes right on here. And you got to put that hole right there so that you can push on the snap ring on the inside. Uh, if you put it too far out, you're gonna be on top of the uh, snap ring. If you put it here, you'll be right where you need to be. So I can see the spring or the snap ring flexing. So I got to get it up underneath it. All right, so I didn't take this off. Uh, I left it on, but I did get the uh, snap ring, the internal, the external one. You see where the guide assembly is coming out because I was hammering on this side, but I stopped before it completely fell out because I didn't want it to slam into the floor. Now I need something longer so that I can uh, push it all the way through and you don't want to use anything that's got like a sharp edge on it because you don't want to break anything. There it is, completely out of the cylinder. I have to hammer it out from the other side. Unfortunately, this video has now become a disassembly video, not a disassembly and rebuild video. And the reason why is because being that I could not specifically find a video for the BX23S, I had to go off other videos as far as what work would need to be done. And one of the common things I saw on a lot of the videos is this portion right here could come off, uh, but that's not the case with this one. One of the videos I watched, the guy had a snap ring on here. And uh, once he removed that, then he would be able to slide that off. But this is all one solid piece of metal. So that's not gonna happen. So originally I thought I could get away with not taking this off because this guide would come off 
this would come off and then this would come off so that I could replace the uh, O-rings inside of it. Then uh, I was like, okay, can't get that off. So this is stuck in here and I can't do that. So now I need to get this off. So my son and I tried to get this off and keep in mind, there's only two flat spots here uh, and this is only on this side so that you can separate the uh, piston rod uh, from the uh, tie rod end. And uh, this is an 18 and the width of the flat spots are uh, four and a half millimeters. So not very uh, wide at all. And then these up here, it's got four flats and these are probably eight, nine millimeters wide. My son and I tried to remove this from the piston rod and uh, we had no luck. Biggest issue is uh, the wrenches that we had were not strong enough and they kept warping or, or just getting to the point where they were spinning without really locking onto the rod. So I ended up taking this into Kubota and uh, basically said, well, since I bought this here, I'm assuming that you guys would be able to remove this. It was taken into the back. I didn't get to see what they were doing. There's nothing I can do. It's not coming apart. He said, you're not going to get this apart. So that's kind of where that being said, ended this project is a rebuild because if I can't get this apart, I can't fix the seal, the internal seal. So, and that'll probably be the one that that leaks once I got all the work done. If I can't get this off, this eliminates this and elim eliminates this. And uh, so now I have to buy a new, did end up buying a new tie rod in and this was 80 bucks. And so I have this one and I have this one that I can use because unfortunately the new cylinder does not come with the tie rod ends.